Okay, this is chapter three, control volume analysis, part 1.2. In this video, I'm going to continue with the introduction. I'm going to talk about some basic definitions and terminology that we need for chapter three, which deals with fluid flow. In other words, fluid dynamics. Yeah, in this video, I'm going to give a very brief introduction to a special topic in fluid dynamics called flow visualization. This is just going to be a quick overview. Some universities have an entire course on this topic at the graduate level. In this image here on the right, what we're seeing is a flow visualization image from a computational fluid dynamics solution to flow over a bicyclist and the bicyclist's helmet. This study was done for the British Olympic team. CFD was used to evaluate the aerodynamic drag on four different helmet designs. We'll talk more about the governing equations, the partial differential equations for fluid flow, and how this type of solution is obtained in the next chapter, in chapter four. What you're seeing in this image are the paths taken by massless fluid particles that are introduced into the flow. And the path lines here are colored by, it looks like they're colored by speed of the particle. So red is fast, and then they go a little slower behind the helmet. You can see what's been done is particles have been introduced at different locations uh, upstream. Very slight differences in the upstream location, uh, of course, produce very different paths over the helmet. And this kind of visualization allows you to see the nature of the flow over the helmet, which gives you some guidance on how to improve the design uh, to make the helmet more streamlined and to reduce the aerodynamic drag. So as you can see, fluid dynamics can be a highly visual subject. And what I'm going to describe in this video is a set of techniques that collectively I would call flow visualization. Now, Flow visualization can be used in either an experimental or a numerical context. So you could be looking at flow over an actual physical model, or it could be done as a post-processing operation in computational fluid dynamics. So after you get a numerical solution to the governing equations for fluid flow, you can use flow visualization to visualize the, the flow around an object, but in a completely digital sense. There are three main types of lines used to visualize uh, flow fields. These are streamlines, streak lines, and path lines. Now, it turns out that all three of these lines follow the same path. They're exactly the same in a steady flow, but they can be substantially different in a transient flow. Fluid dynamics is a highly visual subject, and I think you'll find the images that I'm going to show in this presentation quite interesting. So let's start with streamlines. This is the definition. A streamline is a line that is everywhere tangent to the instantaneous velocity field. And over here, I've drawn a simple two-dimensional flow. The black lines are the velocity vectors, the local velocity vectors. And if you draw a line, these red lines that are everywhere tangent to those local velocity vectors, you get a set of streamlines. And here's the significant point. Because there's no component of V, no component of the local velocity vector that's normal to the streamline, no flow crosses a streamline. And so that means that the amount of flow that enters here travels up, it's sort of trapped between these streamlines, and it exits here, the same amount of flow. So that means that where the streamlines are narrowly spaced, we have higher velocity flow than where the streamlines are widely spaced. Here I've drawn one streamline in the xy plane along with the uh, local velocity vector. And you can see the local velocity vector is broken up into the u and v components. And given that the slope in the xy plane is rise over run, dy over dx, you can see from similar triangles that in a 2D flow, 
dy dx is equal to the v component of velocity over the u component of velocity. And so if you had analytical expressions for v and u, which of course you don't normally have in a real flow, you could use this equation to integrate to get expressions for the uh, stream function contours. And there's an example of that in your textbook. This is an example of using streamlines to visualize an unsteady two-dimensional flow. This is flow over a square cylinder obtained from a computational fluid dynamic solution of the flow field. We'll talk more about where this type of solution comes from in chapter four. Now, let me just start the video here. What we have is a flow accelerating from left to right. And initially you can see two recirculation zones behind the cylinder, and then eventually they go on steady and we get vortex shedding. Now, let me just pause this. The point I want to make is that these are instantaneous streamlines. At any moment in time, the streamlines are everywhere tangent to the local velocity field. So where streamlines are narrowly spaced, these are high velocity regions, and where streamlines are widely spaced, such as immediately behind the square cylinder, we have very low velocity regions. So this is a nice example of using uh, numerically calculated streamlines to visualize a complex transient flow. Let me play that again uninterrupted. It's kind of cool. Another approach to visualizing flow is the streak line. A streak line is a line produced by fluid particles that have passed through a prescribed point. Now, <laughs> personally, I don't find that definition uh, very helpful. A better way to think of streak lines is in terms of an experimental setup. In experiments, streak lines are obtained by the injection of smoke in a gas or dye in a liquid into the flow. Oh, and I've used the word isokinetic here. What I mean by that is that we inject, or we should try to inject the smoke or gas into the flow at the same velocity as the flow, so we don't disturb the flow that we're trying to study. So what I've shown below is an example of using streak lines. You can see smoke is being injected at multiple points upstream of a baseball in a wind tunnel, and the baseball is rotating at about 600 and 30 RPM. So each one of these lines here of smoke is a streak line. It's a streak line because all the smoke has passed through a prescribed point at the tip of the smoke injection tube. So that's a good way to think about streak lines. Now just to explain a little bit, this ball is rotating clockwise and you can see the smoke is flowing downwards. There's a downwash of smoke and that flow being pushed downward by the spinning ball will cause the ball to move towards the top of the image if it wasn't constrained. This is what causes a baseball to curve when a pitcher throws a curve ball. It's called the Magnus effect. Now in that previous example, the wake would have been unsteady. So here's an example of using streak lines in a completely steady flow. What we have is flow over a rectangular block at low Reynolds number, and dye is being injected at multiple points upstream. And in a steady flow, streak lines are tangent to the local velocity vector. So streak lines can be used to visualize streamlines in a steady flow. A few years ago, I used streak lines in my own research. We were looking at the effect of Venetian blinds on the thermal performance of windows and their impact on the energy performance of buildings. This is a streak line image of a one inch Venetian blind with the louvers in the open position. And what you're seeing here is the louvers. These are the louvers here. That's a one inch louver and you're seeing them edge on. So you can see the beautiful flow pattern that forms between the open blind slats. 
this is a steady flow, so the streak lines are equivalent to streamlines. And a big motivation for doing this experiment was that we wanted to validate the streamlines from a simulated flow using computational fluid dynamics. You can see the agreement's pretty good. So this approach can be excellent for validating computer predictions of flow. Another type of line used in flow visualization is the path line. Just like it sounds, a path line is the path that a fluid particle takes through a flow field. I've shown an example in the image below that's not related to fluid dynamics. What you do is you open the camera shutter for an extended period of time and you record the path of shiny particles. For those of you that are into photography, this is done with the B setting on your digital SLR camera. You can open the shutter using a remote shutter release for any amount of time that you like. I've shown the image below, which is unrelated to fluid mechanics, just to illustrate the technique. Here, the photographers pointed the camera at the North Star, and the shutter has been left open for what looks like several minutes. And you can see the paths, the path lines of the stars across the sky because of the rotation of the Earth. And this same approach can be used to see the paths of particles in a flow to get path lines. What is done is the flow is seeded with some shiny, neutrally buoyant particles, particles that are small enough that they won't settle out, at least over the time period of the experiment. In this case, small particles of aluminum have been suspended in glycerin to visualize the flow over a fence at low Reynolds number. So the camera shutter was open for about two seconds, and this creates uh, lines which are paths of the shiny aluminum particles. In a steady flow, these path lines are always tangent to the local velocity. So this is another way to visualize the streamlines in a steady flow. This is another example of using long duration time exposure to get path lines. I find this photograph uh, particularly fascinating. What you're looking at is a side view of several feet of water and up at the top is the free surface. I've drawn a red line at the top just to indicate the, the wavy free surface. And again, the water was seeded with uh, little shiny particles that are neutrally buoyant. And what the experimenter did was open up the shutter and allow a wave train to pass by. And of course, the shiny particles traced their actual paths in space as the wave passed by. Amazingly, the particles near the surface travel in almost perfect circles. And if you've ever been swimming in very uh, wavy conditions, you can feel this effect. Uh, you might try this the next time you're in the ocean. You can feel how a wave makes you move. As the wave approaches, it not only picks you up, but also draws you into the wave and it pulls you forward. And then as the wave passes by, you sink and also get pushed back. So you move in these little circular paths, which is kind of cool. Now, in this case, uh, what we have is an unsteady flow. It's a transient periodic flow. So the circular path lines are not streamlines in this case. I'd like to end with this short clip that shows some interesting uh, techniques for visualizing flows in water using hydrogen bubbles. It's a bit old, produced in 1963. So the sound and image quality isn't the best but the technical content is excellent. Uh, for example, after hearing this presentation, you might be a bit puzzled as to why streak lines and path lines aren't streamlines in an unsteady flow. I personally found this concept quite difficult to wrap my head around. And this video gives the best demonstration that I've seen by far uh, that shows that streak lines and path lines are not streamlines in a transient flow. So I'll just play the video. There are a number of visualization methods that can be used with a water channel like this. We can use dye injection, 
we can use surface powder on the water. First thing we're going to use here, however, is the hydrogen bubble method. If we connect a DC voltage to a very fine wire, here two mils, and put the wire in the water, electrolysis forms extremely small hydrogen bubbles which are swept off by the flow. Most of these bubbles are small enough so that they follow the flow quite accurately. A few large bubbles are also formed. We ignore them in observing the flow pattern. Here you see a probe with multiple thin fingers which makes many fine lines. The first concept is the path line. A path line is the trajectory or path of a given fluid element. Here we mark a small element with bubbles so that we can follow its path. If we took a time exposure, we would make the entire path visible. Instead, we superpose a path line and you can check for yourself that each of these squares follows it. A streak line is a little different. It is the instantaneous locus or trace of all the fluid elements that pass through a given fixed point in space. If we run a short, uninsulated section of a bubble wire steadily, it shows us a streak line. In steady flow, each particle coming past the fixed point moves down the same path, and therefore the streak line is identical to the path line. We can check this by resuperposing the path line you saw earlier. Often it is useful to use multiple streak lines to observe a flow field. We can make them with the multiple finger wire you saw before. The fourth concept we need is the streamline. A streamline is defined as any line that at a given instant is everywhere tangent to the velocity vectors of the flow field. The streamline is essentially a mathematical idea and is very useful in many fluid flow analyses. But there's no way to make a streamline directly visible. You've seen that in steady flow, the path line and the streak line are the same and you might suspect that the streamlines would coincide with them also. This is in fact the case. Consider a particle moving along in steady flow. As you saw, each particle moves down the same path line, so that it's always moving down this path towards the particle ahead of it. This means it is always tangent to the path, and that is how we define a streamline. So in steady flow, the streamline, the streak line, and the path line are all the same, and we can use either streak lines or path lines to show us the streamline pattern. Now consider for a moment an unsteady flow, like the one you see here past an oscillating plate. Do you think that in this case, the streak line or the path line will be the same as the streamlines? Let's look at a path line and see. Here is a single marked element entering at a fixed time in the cycle of a plate. As before, we superpose its path line. Now compare the path line with a succession of instantaneous streak lines entering through the same point. None of the instantaneous streak lines coincides with the path line.
Here is a second element entering through the same point, but starting at a different time in the cycle of the plate. Notice that its path line crosses that of the first element almost at right angles, and it leaves around the other side of the plate. Now you see elements marked at both times in the cycle of the plate. If we superpose the path line of the second element and compare it with a set of streak lines through the same point, you can see that none of them coincide with a second path line either. Now let's see about the streamlines. In order to find the streamlines, we need the direction of the velocity at each point. We can find this from combined time streak markers, such as you see here. If we take a transparency of one frame of the multiple time streak lines and overlay on it another transparency taken a few moments later, we can connect the endpoints of the streak lines and show the particle paths for short time intervals. Here you see the short dashes made by connecting the endpoints of the time streak lines. They show us the velocity direction at each point. If we draw lines parallel to them, these are the streamlines. The total streamline picture you see here is for the same instant that the first particle we observed with a path line entered the frame. The dotted streamline is the one that passes through the same point. If we compare the dotted streamline with the path line through the same point and at the same instant in time, you see they are quite different. If we compare the dotted streamline with a set of streak lines entering through the same point, they do not coincide either. In a transient flow, the streak line, the path line, and the streamline are all different. And that completes this presentation.